Hi guys, I'm back. Today I'm going to read Ezekiel 39 to 43, Proverbs 24, and Psalm 149. Let's get started. And you, son of man, prophesy against God and say, Bless us, Lord God. Behold, I am against you, O God, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And I'll turn you about and drive you forth, and bring you up from the uttermost parts of the north, and lead you against the mountains of Israel. Then I'll strike your bow from your left hand, and make your arrows and arrows drop out of your right hand. You shall fall on the mountains of Israel, you and all your hordes, and all the people who are with you. I'll give you, I'll give you to birds of prey of every sort and to the beast of the field to be devoured. You shall fall in the open field, for I have spoken to curse the Lord God. I will send fire on my rock and on those and on those who lost you early in the curse land. And they shall know that I am the Lord. And my holy name I will make known in the midst of the people of my people. And I will not let my holy name be profaned anymore. And the nations will know shall know that I am the Holy One in Israel. We hold it is coming, and it will be brought about to the the Lord God. That is the day of which I am Then those who go in the city of Israel will go on and make fires for the, of the weapons and bits, shields and, and bucklers, bow and arrows, clubs and spears. They will make fires of them for seven years, so that they will not need to take wood out of the field or cut down any out of the forest, but they will make their fires of the weapons. They will seize the spoil of those who despoil them, and plunder those who plunder them, declares the Lord God. And that day I will give to Gog a place for burial in Israel, in the valley of the travellers, and on the east of the sea. It will block the trap. It will block the travellers, for there Gog and all his multitude will be buried. It will, it will be called the valley of Hamon Gog. And for seven months, the house of Israel will be buried in order to cleanse the land. All the people of the land will bury them, and it will bring them down on the day that I shall make work. The last will go. And they'll, they'll set apart men to reveal. They'll set apart men to travel through the land regularly and bury those travelers and make them on the face of the land, so as to cleanse them. At the end of seven months, they'll make their search. And when these travel through, the land and anyone sees a human bow, then we shall see a sign by it. So the barriers have buried it in the valley of Hermon Gog. And thus shall they cleanse it. As for you, so may. And the house is lover. Speak to the birds of every sort and to all the beasts of the field. Assemble and come. Gather from all the land to, uh, to the sacrificial feast that I am preparing for you. The great sacrificial feast on the mountains of Israel. And you shall eat the flesh and drink. You shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the of rams, of lambs, and of he goats, of bulls, all of them, fat beasts of battle. And you shall eat fat till you are filled, and drink blood till you are drunk. And the sacrificial feast that I am preparing for you. And you shall be filled at my table with horses and charities, with mighty men and all kinds of things to close the world. And I will set my glory among the, among the nations, and all the nations shall see my judgment that I have executed, and my hand that I have laid on The house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord of God, upon that day for and the nations shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for the people, because they dealt so treacherously with me that I hid my face from them, and gave them into the hand of their adversaries, and they all fell by the sword. He dealt with them according to their uncleanness and their transgression, and hid my face from them. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, now, now I will restore the fortunes of Jacob and have mercy on the whole house of Israel. Then I will be jealous for my holy name. They shall forget their shame and their noble treachery that they have practiced with me against me. And they dwell securely in their land with none to make them afraid. When I have brought them back from the Hebrews and from the land of their enemies, they throw them back in the feet of my holiness and the side of many nations. And they shall know that I am the Lord they are, because I sent them into exile among the nations and then assembled them into their enemy. I will leave none of the remaining among the nations anymore. And I will not hide my face anymore from them. When I pour out my spirit upon the house of the Lord, the person will go.
In the 25th year of our exile, at the beginning of the year, on the 10th day of the month, in the 14th year after the city was struck up, on that very day, when the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me to the sea. In visions of God, he brought me to the land of earth, and set me down on a great height, on which there was a structure like the city of Christa. And he brought me there, there was a man whose appearance was like God, with a linen cord and a measuring reed in his hand. And he was standing in the gateway, and the man said to me, Son of man, look with your eyes, and hear with your ears, and set your heart upon all that I shall show you. But you were brought here in order that I might show it to you. Declare all that you see to the house of Israel. And behold, there was a wall in the outside of the temple area, and the length of the measuring reed in the man's hand was six long cubits, each being a cubit and a hand breadth in length. So he measured the thickness of the wall, one reed, and the height, one reed. Then he went into the gateway to his house, going up his steps, and measured the threshold of the gate, one reed deep, and the side ramp, one reed deep, and one reed deep. And there was a phrase between the side ramp, one reed deep, and the threshold of the gate by the vestibule of the gate at the end of it, one reed deep. Then he measured the vestibule of the gateway on the inside, one reed deep. And he measured the vestibule of the gateway. A cubits and its in and its jams, two cubits, and the vestibule of the gate was at the end, and there were three side rooms on the other side of the east gate. The three were of the same size, and the jams on the other side were of the same size. We only measured the width of the opening of the gateway, ten cubits, and the length of the gateway, thirteen cubits. There was a barrier before the side rooms. One cubit on either side, and the side rooms were six cubits on either side. Then he measured the gate from the ceiling of the one side room. He also measured the vestibule, sixty cubits. And around the vestibule to the gateway was the court. And from the front of the gate at the entrance to the front of the inner vestibule of the gate were fifty cubits. And the gateway had windows all around, narrowing inwards to the side rooms. And poor damp jams. And likewise, the vestibule had windows all around inside. And on the jams were palm trees. And he brought me into the outer court. And behold, there were chambers and a pavement all around the court. Thirty chambers faced the pavement. And the pavement ran along the side of the gate, corresponding to the length of the gate. This was the lower pa pavement. And he measured the distance from the inner front of the lower gate to the outer front of the inner court. A hundred cubits on the east side and on the north side. And as for the gate faith that faced toward the north, the longing to the outer court, he measured its length and its breadth. Its side rooms, three on either side, its, and its strands and its rest pool were of the same size as those of the first gate. Its length was 50 cubits, and its breadth, 25 cubits. And its windows, its vestibule, and its palm trees were of the same size as those of the gate that were faced toward the east. And by seven steps, people would go up to it and find its vestibule before them. And opposite the gate on the north and on the east was a gate to the inner court. And he measured them, measured from gate to gate a hundred cubits. And he led me toward the south. And behold, there was a gate on the south. And he measured its jams and its vestibule. They had the same size on the other, as the others. Both it and its vestibule had windows all over the windows of the others. Its length was fifty cubits. And its breadth, 25 cubits. And there were seven steps leading up to it. And its vestibule was before them. And it had palm trees on its jams, one on either side. And there was a gate on the south of the inner court. And he measured from gate to gate towards south, a hundred cubits. Then he brought me to the inner court through the north gate, south gate. And he measured the south gate. It was of the same size as the others. Its side rooms, its jams, and its vestibule were of the same size as the others. As the others. Its side room is jammed, and its vestibule were of the same size as the other one, and both it and its vestibule. The wind had windows all over. Its length was 50 cubits, and its breadth 25 cubits, and there was vestibule for all around. 25 cubits, and cubits 5 cubits broad. Its vestibule faced the outer floor, and palm tree were on its jams. It, and its stairway had 8 steps, and then he brought me to the inner court on the east side, and then he made it the gate. It was of the same size as the others. His side room, his jams, and its vestibule were of the same chambers. Were of the chambers. 
same size as the others. Both it and its best ones have Windows Warfare. Its length was 50 cubits. And its breadth, 25 cubits. And its vegetable face and outer court. And it had palm trees on the east jam on either side. And its stairway had eight steps. Then he brought me to the north gate and he measured it. It has the same size as the others. And its side roof, its jams, and its vegetable were of the same size as the others. So, and it had windows all around. Its length was 50 cubits and its breadth. 25 cubits. Its vegetable face now to cook. And it had palm trees on its strand on either side, and its gate. stairway had eight steps. There was a chamber with its door in the vestibule of the gate, where the burnt offering was to be washed. And in the vestibule of the gate were two tables on either side, on which the burnt offering and the sin offering and the offering were to be stored. And off to the side. And then on the other side, as one goes up to the entrance of the north gate, and here are two tables. And off to the other, other side of the vessel of the gate were two tables. Four tables were on either side of the gate, eight tables on which to slaughter. And there were four tables of home stone, stone for the bed offering, a cubit and a half long. And a cubit and a half broad, or one cubit high, on which the instruments were to be laid, with which the burnt offerings and the sacrifices were slaughtered. And hooks, hand breadth long, were fastened all around within. And on the tables, the flesh of the offering was to be laid. On the outside of the inner gateway, there were two chambers in the inner court, one at the side of the north gate facing the south, the other at the side of the south gate facing the north. And he said to this chamber that faces south is for the priests who have charge of the temple, and the chamber that faces north is for the priests who have charge near the altar. And these are the sons of Zadok, who alone among the sons of Levi may come near to the Lord to minister to him. And he measured the court, a hundred cubits long and a hundred cubits long, a square. And the altar was in front of the temple. Then he brought me to the vestibule of the temple and measured the jams of the vestibule, five cubits on either side. And the breadth of the gate was fourteen cubits. And the side walls of the gate were three cubits on either side. The length of the vestibule was twenty cubits, and the breadth twelve cubits. And the people would go up to it by ten steps. And there were pillars beside the jams, one on either side. And he brought me to the nave and measured the jams. On each side, six cubits was the breadth of the jams, and the breadth of the entrance was ten cubits, and the side walls of the entrance were five cubits on either side, and he measured the length of the nave, forty cubits, and its breadth, twenty cubits, and he went into the inner room and measured the jams of the entrance, two cubits, and the entrance, six cubits, and the side walls on either side of the entrance, seven cubits, and he measured the length of the room, twenty cubits, and its breadth. 20 cubits across the nave, and he said to me, This is the most holy place. And he measured the wall of the temple, six cubits thick, and then the breadth of the side chambers, four cubits, all around the temple. And the side chambers were in three stories, one over another, 30 in each story. There were offsets all around the wall of the temple to serve as supporters, supports for the, the side chambers. So that they should not be supported by the wall of the temple. So, and it became broader as it wound upward to the side chambers, because the temple was enclosed upward all around the temple. Thus, the temple had a broad area upward, and so went up from the lower story to the top story to the middle story. And I saw also that the temple had a raised platform all around. The foundations of the side chambers measured a full reed of six long cubits. The thickness of the outer wall of the side chambers was five cubits. The free space between the side chambers of the temple and the outer of the chambers was a breadth of twenty cubits all around the temple on every side. And the doors were of the side chambers opened on the free space, one door toward the north and another door toward the south. And the breadth of the of the five free space was five cubits all around. The building that had was facing the separate yard on the west side was seventy cubits broad, and the wall of the building was five cubits thick all around. 
and its length 90 cubits. Then he measured the temple uh, 100 cubits long, and the yard and the building with its walls uh, 100 cubits long. This is the breadth of the east from the temple and right within the yard 100 cubits. Then he measured uh, the length of the building facing the yard that was at the back of and its galleries on either side 100 cubits. On the inside of the nave and the vestibules of the court, the threshold and the narrow windows and the galleries all around the three of them. Opposite the threshold were well, panelled with wood all around, from the floor up to the windows. Now the windows were covered to the space above the floor, even to the inner room, and on the outside. And, uh, and the walls were all around, inside and outside. It was a major pattern. It was carved with cherubim and palm tree, the palm tree between cherub and cherub. Every cherub had two faces, a human face toward the palm tree on the one side, and the face of a young lion toward the palm tree on the other side. They were carved on the whole temple all around. From the floor to above the door, cherubim and palm trees were carved. Similarly, the wall of the nave. The doorpost of the nave was square. In front of the holy place was something resembling an outer wood, three cubits high, two cubits long, two and two cubits broad. Its corners, its base, and its walls were of wood. He said to this is the table that is, that is before the Lord. The nave and the holy place had each a double door. The double doors had two leaves apiece, two of them were for each door. And on the doors of the nave were carved cherubim and palm trees, such as were carved on the walls. And there was a canopy of wood in front of the vestibule outside. And there were no windows and palm trees on either side. On the side walls of the vestibule, the side chambers of the temple, and the canopies. Then he led me out into the outer court toward the north. Then he brought me to the chambers that were opposite the separate yard and opposite the building, not to the north. The length of the building, whose door faced north, was 100 cubits, and the breadth, 50 cubits. Facing the 20 cubits that belonged to the inner court, and facing the pavement that belonged to the outer court, was gallery against gallery, and facing in three stories. And behold, before the chambers was a passage in wood, ten cubits wide and a hundred cubits long, and their doors were on the north. Now the upper chambers and were narrower, for the gallery took more away from them than the lower and the middle chambers of the building, though they were in three stories, and they had no pillars like the pillars of the course. Thus the upper chambers were set back from the ground more than the lower and the middle ones, and there was a wall outside parallel, parallel to the chambers saw the outer court took opposite the chambers, 50 cubits long. For the chambers on the outer court were 50 cubits long, while those opposite the nave were 100 cubits long. Therefore, below these chambers was an entrance on the east side, as one enters them from the outer court. In the thickness of the wall of the court on the south, also opposite the yard and opposite the building, there were chambers with a passage in front of them. They were similar to the chambers of the north, the same way in breadth, with the same exits and arrangements and doors, as were the entrances of the chambers on the south. There was an entrance at the beginning of the passage, the passage before the corresponding wall on the east as one enters. Then he said to me, the north chambers and the south chambers opposite the yard are the holy chambers, where the priests who approach the wall shall eat the most holy offering. There they shall put the most holy offering, the grain offering, the sin offering, and the guilt offering, for the place is holy. When the priests enter the holy place, they shall not go out of it into the outer court without laying there the garments in which they minister. For these are holy. They shall go on out of the garments before they go near to that which is for the people. Now when he had finished measuring the interior of the temple area, he led me out by the gate that I faced east and measured the temple area all around. He measured the east side with a measuring reed, 500 cubits by the measuring reed all around. He measured the south side, 500 cubits by the measuring reed all around. He measured the south side, 500 cubits by the measuring reed. Then he turned to the west side and measured 500 cubits by the measuring reed. Then he, he measured it on the four sides. He did a wall around it, 500 cubits long and 500 cubits broad, to make a separation between the holy and the holy and the common. Then he led me to the gate, the gate facing east. Then behold, the glory of the God of Israel was coming from the east, and the sound of his coming was like the sound of many waters, and the earth shone with its glory, with his glory. And the vision I saw was just like the vision that I had seen when he came to destroy the sea, just like, and just like the vision that I had seen by the Chabal Canal. 
Then I fell on my face, and I saw the glory of the Lord entered the temple by the gate facing east. The Spirit was for me up and brought me into the inner court, and beheld the glory of the Lord filled the temple. While the man was standing beside me, I heard one speaking to me out of the temple. Then he said to me, Son of man, this is the place of my throne, and the place of the soles of my feet. Glory I will dwell in the midst of the people of Israel forever, and in the house of Israel shall no more to fill my holy name. Neither they nor their kings, by the whoring and by the dead bodies of their kings, has their high places. By setting their threshold by my threshold and their doorpost beside my doorpost, with only a wall between me and them, they have defiled my holy name by the abominations that they have committed. So I have consumed them in my anger. Now let them put away their whoring and the dead bodies of their kings far from me. And I will dwell in their midst forever. As for you, son of man, describe to the house of Israel the temple, that they may be ashamed of their iniquity. And they shall measure the place. And if they are ashamed of all that they have done, make it known to them the design of the temple, its arrangement, its exit, and, and its entrances, that is, its whole design, and make it known to them as well as they, its statutes, and all its and its whole design and all its laws, and write down in their sight, so that they may observe all its laws and its, all its statutes, and carry them out. This is the law of the temple, the whole territory on the top of the mountain, all around, it shall be most holy. Behold, this is the law of the temple. These are the measurements of the altar by cubits, the cubit being a cubit and a hand breadth. Its face shall be one cubit high, and by one and one cubit broad, and with, with a rim of one span around its edge. And this shall be the height of the altar, from the base of on the ground to the lower ledge, two cubits, with a breadth of one cubit, and from the smaller ledge to the larger ledge, four, four cubits, and the breadth of one cubit, and the altar breadth half or four cubits, and from the outer half projecting upward four horns. The outer half shall be square, twelve cubits long by twelve broad. The ledge shall also shall be a square, fourteen cubits long by fourteen broad, as the rim all around, around it half a cubit broad, and its base one cubit all around. And the steps of the altar shall face east. And he said to me, Son of man, thus is the look of these are the ordinances for the altar. On the day when it is erected to for the offering and to burnt offerings for offering burnt offerings upon it and for throwing blood against it, you shall give to the Levitical priest of the family in Zadok, who draw near to me to minister to me to bless the Lord God, and bull from the herd of a sin offering, and you shall take some of its blood and put it on the four horns of of the altar and on the four corners of the legend upon the rim all around. Thus you shall purify the altar and make atonement for it. You shall also take the bull of the sin offering, and it shall be burned in the appointed place belonging to the temple, outside the sacred area. And on the second day you shall offer a male goat without blemish for a sin offering, and the altar shall be purified, and as it was purified with the bull. When you have finished purifying it, you shall offer a bull. Mm. You shall offer a bull from the herd without blemish, and a ram from the flock without blemish. You shall present them before the Lord. <clears throat> and the priest shall sprinkle salt and offer them up as a burnt offering to the Lord. For seven days, you shall provide daily a male goat for a male goat for the for a sin offering. Also, a bull from the herd and a ram of the flock without blemish shall be provided. Seven days shall they make atonement for the altar and cleanse it, and so consecrate it. And when the he has completed your these days, from, from the day eighth day onward, the priest shall offer on the altar your burnt offerings and your peace offerings. And I will accept you, declares the Lord God. Proverbs 24. Be not envious of evil men, nor desire to be with them, for their hearts devise violence, and their lips talk of trouble. I wisdom my house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant things. 
riches. A wise man is full of strength, and a man of knowledge enhances his mind. We will buy wise of iron so you can wage your war, and in abundance of counsel is there's victory. Wisdom is too high for a fool, and the gate he does not open his mouth. Whoever plans to do evil will be called a shima. The device of folly is sin, and the scoffer is an abomination to mankind. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Rescue those who are being taken away to death. Hold back those who are stumbling to the slaughter. And if you say, Behold, we do not know this. Does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who keeps watch over your soul know it? And he not read. And will he not repay man according to his work? Most and eat honey, for it is good. And the drippings of the honeycomb are sweet to your taste. Know that wisdom is such to your soul. If you find it, there will be a future, and your hope will not be cut off. Lie not and wait as a wicked man against the dwelling of the righteous. Do no violence to his hope. For the righteous falls seven times and rises again. Let the wicked stumble in times of calamity. Mm. And do not rejoice when your enemy falls. And let not your heart be glad when he stumbles, lest, lest the Lord's hand be displeased, and turn his anger from him. And fret not, be, fret not yourself because of evil dogs, and be not envious of the wicked, for the evil man has no future. The lamp of the wicked will be put out, and his son fear the Lord and the king, and do not join with those who do otherwise. Now when disaster will arise suddenly from them. <laughs> and who knows the ruin that will come from them both? These are also our sayings of the wise. Partiality and judging is not good. Whoever says to the wicked, You are in the right, will be cursed by peoples, abhorred by the nations. That those who rebuke the wicked will, <laughs> will have to lie. And a good blessing will come upon them. When he gives an honest answer, kisses the lips. Prepare your work at the outside, and get, every, get ready every thing and get everything ready for yourself in the field and after that build your house be not a witness against your neighbor without cause and do not deceive with your lips do not say i'll do to him what as he has done to me i'll pay the man back for what he has done i passed by the field of a slug by the vineyard of a man like he says and we held it was all overgrown by with thorns its ground was covered with nettles and its snowball head was frozen down and then i saw him consider it i looked and received instruction a little sleep, a little slumber, and a, a little folding of the hands to rest. And poverty will come upon you like a robber, and want like an old man. Prov. Psalm 149. Praise to praise the Lord, but sing to the Lord a new song. Let his praise in the assembly of the godly. Let Israel be glad in his maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. May let them praise his name with dancing. <laughs> Make a melody to him with tam- tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. Let the godly exalt in glory. Let them sing for joy in their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their throats, and two-edged swords in their hands, to execute vengeance on the nations, and punishments on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains, and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the judgment of This is honor for all his godly ones. Praise the Lord. Now they stand, I shall now to the Lord's prayer. Please bow your heads. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, it will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as you also forgive our debtors. Please not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.